I don't know. I don't know if I... Oh yeah, I got one. What's going on? So I'm gonna go try and get one of these guys right here. Nice little California helmet. That was a big one that I caught. Man, it's already been two and a half years since I caught that one. But anyways, one another one like that. In my last few videos, almost all the videos actually, that I've been fishing the San Francisco Bay, I've been trolling herring. And I'm gonna do that again today, but I also wanna try something a little bit different. So I'm gonna try some artificials. And I was watching one of my buddies, Austin, his YouTube channel is called Fisherman Wilson. And he was making this swim bait for bass fishing. And I was thinking, I feel like that's gonna work perfectly out in the ocean. And in particular, I think maybe a halibut might like that. So what I'm gonna make today is this guy right here. And what I think this imitates really well is a little live smelt. So anyways, we start with the swim bait. Like I said, I'm trying to imitate a little live smelt. And I think this one does a pretty good job. It's got that like white on the top, chartreuse in the middle, and then some sparkle on the bottom. And I really like those eyes right there. I feel like anything with eyes is gonna work a little bit better than those swim baits that don't have eyes. A pair of scissors, this stirring straw, I stole this from 7-Eleven. And then this is kind of extra, but this is a little uh, bottle of clear nail polish. And what I'm gonna do is just stick this stirring straw right through the bait, right about through there. And then it's got a little opening on the bottom for the hook. And so I want this to come out right by the bottom there. And um, this swim bait is a little bit smaller than the one that they were making, that my buddy Austin was making. So it's a little bit tougher to get this stirring straw right down the middle, but I'm gonna do my best here. So just stick it in there. You can see I got it started there. And just work it down, work it down. Try to go as close to the center as possible. So if you can see that, yeah, you should be able to see that. It's just kind of sticking right through the middle there and then coming out the bottom where there's that little gap right there for normally for the hook. So just enough so that it's just sticking out the bottom there. You don't want it sticking out too far. What I'm gonna do is just cut it just like that. And then that's what we have so far. All right, so we got it threaded through and then I'm just gonna stick one end of this hook right in the butt of this bait. Just get it in there nice. So that's what it looks like right there. Perfect little imitation. Let me fix this hook a little bit. Yeah, there we go. All right. In my opinion, a perfect little smell imitation. And then actually I'm gonna do one more thing. So this is where that nail polish comes in. So I feel like these eyes, like I can already tell they're just not sticking in there very well. So I'm just gonna add an extra little coat of glue, basically. Careful not to hit that line. I don't want the line to get stuck to the, the stirring straw inside there. Just put like a dab on each of the eyes and I think that'll just lock it in a little bit nicer so that those don't come off after, you know, one bite of a halibut. And again, I didn't make this up. I got an idea from my buddy Austin, so check out his video. I'll leave it linked in the description if you want to see a more in-depth representation of how to make this. But anyways, that's about it. Hopefully, the halibut out there that agree with me that this looks like a nice little lively smell swimming through that San Francisco Bay. Boom! Look at this guy. I want it to just be sticking right there, right out of the corner of his mouth. I made it out. Got my rig set up here. This is basically just a standard three-way setup. The same thing I would use if I was trolling a herring. And then instead of the herring, we have this swim bait that we've made. So I'm gonna put this down right now. Start trolling immediately. It's a little bit late today. It's 10.30, I'll get to why we're here so late in a minute. But, um, but anyways, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just kind of troll this next to the kayak. And See what kind of action I'm getting at different speeds because this is a new lure that I've never used before. I want to make sure it has a good action at whatever speed I'm going. So it looks pretty good actually. I don't need to go that fast it seems. All right, yeah, let's just drop it down. I do like the color on this thing. It's going to show up really well in this little bit murkier water that we have in the San Francisco Bay that 
that white color. I just I think that's going to stand out real well. So pretty shallow here, 13 feet, but we'll start trolling. Uh, halibut definitely could be in the shallow. I'm going to get the other one down on this side. Once again, I know I say this every time, so if you've watched you know, my videos for a while, I apologize for the repetitiveness, but I just want to say this every time because I don't want anyone to get confused. I'm going to be using two rods here in the San Francisco Bay, but normal, regular sport fishermen cannot use two rods. It's just a one rod limit. I happen to have a commercial license, so that's what allows me to control multiple rods. So, now that I got that cleared up, this one's down. I think it's trolling effectively. So I mentioned we're out here a little bit later now. It's 10.30. Normally I want to get here like basically as soon as possible around the sun's coming up. But today we came here a little later for pretty much for two reasons. The main, the, the first reason, I guess this isn't the main reason. The first reason is because the high tide this morning is at 11.30 a.m. So ideal, you know, generally speaking, you want to fish the slack tide, which is basically an hour before high tide till an hour after high tide and that's not saying you can't catch them outside of those times but generally speaking if you talk to most anglers who fish San Francisco Bay they'll say that th those are the best times so because of the tide is so so much later today I wasn't in as much of a rush to get out here early in the morning and in fact right now I'd say for the next two hours is going to be the ideal time I think when my chances are best to get there so that was the first reason we're out here late and then the main reason is just because it doesn't matter how many times I've done it Getting up early is always a struggle for me. I'm just not a morning person. No matter how much I try to fool myself, it's just not me. So anyways, so that's the main reason we're out here a little bit later. And then secondly, you might have noticed I've been wearing this glove today. And um, normally, in fact, I don't think I've ever worn a glove while fishing. A lot of people do it while crabbing. They don't want to get the, the bait on their hands and stuff. But normally I just go for it, you know our fishing style but yesterday I was trying to make some sushi trying to do my outdoor chef life impression and I sliced my finger right here on the knuckle really really bad and um, took it to the doctor and luckily they didn't have to stitch it up but I got some tape on there and the doctor said don't get it wet for the first 24 hours and of course in my mind the first thing I'm thinking is how am I gonna possibly go fishing without getting my finger wet so this is my best my uh, best uh, attempt to keep it dry. He didn't say no fishing, so that's why we're out here. That's a fish. Oh, missed one. That was totally a fish. One thing that um, I was concerned about this before is with the herring, the, I find that the halibut will grab onto it and hold onto it, but I'm not sure they're going to do that with this artificial, so I might just have to get lucky and have him get hooked. Yeah, well, I mean, that's a good sign. You got a bite. All right, that's a good confidence booster, though. I'll make a little circle here. Update. It's now 12:30. Not much has happened. I'm beginning to lose a little bit of hope in these swim baits. Although I did get one bite. So we fish all through the slack tide. It's now about an hour after the top of the tide, so it's starting to rip, you know, a little bit stronger again, which makes things a little bit tougher. But I don't know. I don't know if I. Oh yeah, I got one. Right when I was saying I was losing hope. Wow, what timing on that. <laughs> That's funny. I was just saying, starting to lose a little bit of hope, although I did get that one bite, so you know I had a little bit of confidence in it. But we fished all the way through the like, you know, prime time in the tide and only had that one hit, it was a little bit worrisome. I mean, I don't know. I just wasn't sure if I was fishing a bad area or if it was actually the swim baits that weren't working, but 
We're gonna lay all that to bed now. Seems like the swim baits, they do work. This feels like a good fish. It's got some weight to it. Definitely not as big as the one I caught in my last video. Man, if you wanna see a big halibut, check that one out. But this is a totally different ball game. Using a custom designed swim bait. That's a nice fish. Not big, but it's definitely a keeper. go haha look at that you can see the swim bait that we custom designed there it is right there and you can see the because it's that line through swim bait or whatever you call it it just slides up and down and once that hook gets planted in the, the, the roof of the fish's mouth this thing can just slide freely came in clutch it's probably a good 25 26 inch fish right when I was starting to lose hope all right mr. halibut I appreciate you for coming to play. Oh, look at that, the hook just came out. Just like that. And the beauty of fishing artificials like this is after getting a hit like that or whatever, you know, bringing in a fish, super simple. We just stick that hook right back into the bait. Just like so, super simple. We don't have to worry about rigging up another herring. Drop that back down in record time. We're fishing again. That's a wonderful thing. So I think what we're gonna do is make a circle back around and fish that spot again. Because oftentimes halibut, they'll group up in one little area. Even though they're not like a schooling fish, you know, fish that swim around in like salmon, and striper, stuff like that. They will group up in one area. So we're gonna work this little area here, see if there's any more down there. And what I was saying earlier in the video is I have a commercial license, which allows me to use multiple rods here in the bay. What it would also do is allows me to sell fish to some of you at home. So I like to do that. So every time that I have fish for sale, I make a little post on Instagram. So I always say if you're interested in buying some fish, mostly halibut, um, follow me on Instagram. That's just the easiest way for me to post, you know, up-to-date information. Cause I hate to say, oh, I'm gonna go catch you a fish. And then, you know, fishing's never really for sure. So. I don't like to promise it until I actually have the fish in my cooler on the ice, um, which I can do a lot easier through Instagram. It's tough to do that through YouTube. So anyway, this one's for sale. We'll see if we have any takers. And um, yeah, maybe we'll get another one here. So you know what? Actually, let's give a measure. Let's see. I'm getting my finger all cut up. 20. Six and a half. That's a nice fish. And actually, there was some debate the other day. I was talking with some other uh, fishing buddies, and we weren't sure the exact, you know, official way to measure how. But obviously, this one's way over 22, so it's a keeper. We don't have to worry about. It. But you know, on those borderline fish, what's the proper way to measure it? You know, do you pinch the tail to like see exactly how long you can get it, or do you just let it rest? And what we came to the conclusion is. You're not supposed to touch the fish at all. You just lay it, make sure the mouth is closed, the chin is all the way up to the end of the ruler. And uh, you know, if we want to get proper measurement, we'd actually have to take it off this cliff because the mouth won't close all the way with the cliff in it. But anyways, you get the idea. Mouth closed all the way, push it all the way up to the end, and then just let it rest and see where the end of that tail reaches on the ruler. And so this one is right above 26, it's about 26 and a half. And personally, you know, I do a lot of fishing, so I'm not super, you know, desperate on, you know, taking home fish every time I come out. So anything that's below like 22 and a half, I just let those go. I don't, it's not worth it for me to, you know, risk that and say, you know, maybe I gave it up, accidentally measured it incorrectly, or you know, maybe the fish shrinks a little bit in the cooler, whatever. I have to give that at least half an inch buffer um, just to make sure that, you know, all the fish you're taking home are legal fish. But anyways, yeah, if you're unclear on the measurement of the fish, you know, the exact proper way to measure it, definitely contact you with the uh, DFG. I'm not out here giving legal advice, so, you know, always best to double check the information with them. Uh, but anyways, let's put this one on ice. That's funny how that happened. Right as I was just beginning to lose hope. I don't know why that seems to happen to me fairly often. Yeah, that's a 
fish. Fish. Look at the fish. Oh, that's a good one. Yep, 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 yep. Oh. That feels like a good one. That's a good one. Custom swim bait, getting it done. Oh, number two. So when the hook gets stuck in the fish, that swim bait just slides up and down the leader. I'm not sure if that helps. I feel like it helps a little bit keeping the fish pinned if they don't have that swim bait to kind of leverage, shake that hook. But yeah, this one's got pinned right in the top of the mouth there. Right where you want him. All right, we'll get this one bled. Get back down there. It's like a twin to the last one. 26. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap it up for today. A little bit breezy out here, gonna go saw off these fish. Uh, this swim bait was really, really clutch for me today. I mean, I'm sure I could have come out, trolled herring, and caught maybe a fish or two, but I really think that this setup or this little swim bait deal is a, a valid contender out here. So I'll definitely be keeping it in my tackle box. Shout out again to Austin for the idea. I'm sure freshwater guys have been doing this for a long time, but I never really seen it out in the salt water. So I might have to bust it out again if I ever forget my herring. If you've been watching the channel, I've forgotten my herring like three or four times already this year. So definitely gonna keep this one in the tackle box, ready to go when Judy calls. And hey, maybe if the smells are running, like I said earlier in the video, this, I feel like this little swim bay here is a perfect imitation of a little smelt, which he's held in love. So, you know, maybe if the smelts are running and I can't catch him as live bait, strap one of these guys on and Halibut just might not be able to resist it. So anyways, cool little video. Nice to do something a little bit different. It's always fun to catch it on a lure that you kind of customize yourself. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions. Maybe something I do a little different on this lure. But yeah, I think it worked out pretty well. Appreciate all of you for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Later.